Funding for this podcast comes from MathWorks, creators of MATLAB and Simulink software, accelerating the pace of engineering and science. Learn more at MathWorks.com. Hey, it's Daryl. Team Common is currently working on our transition to a weekly show. We'll be back this summer with new episodes. In the meantime, here's one from our archives. WBUR Podcasts, Boston. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and you're listening to The Common. WBUR reporter Ariel Gray, welcome back to The Common. Hey, Daryl. Ari, Boston has a lot of history, right? Uh, sure does. Tea Party, the Boston Massacre, the abolitionist movement. There's a lot of stuff here. Oh, yes. Um, but there's also some history that gets overlooked. Mm -hmm. And you actually went on a tour in the city that highlights some of this hidden history here in Boston. Tell me about it. Take me through it. So these tours are called The Hidden History of Black Boston. And mm -hmm. there are actually tours that take place in different sections of Boston. The tours are led by this researcher and educator named Joel McCall. And mm -hmm. this particular tour I went on was of the North End. So it's a walking tour. So it was like a two hour long, maybe a little bit longer than two hours. So I definitely got my steps in while doing it. You know Hell what I'm saying? Hell yeah, get them 10,000 <laughs> steps in. Um, and Joel is just this guy who seems to have a permanent smile on his face. And you meet up with him and he's got a bag filled with all of these papers and documents that he pulls out. And, you know, he's got photos and other materials. Yeah, I want to know more about Joel, Ari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joel Joel was born here in Boston, you know, and we were talking and he was telling me, you know, he spent a lot of time working in the corporate world. At a certain point, he just got fed up with it and he left the corporate world and he makes, he calls it this pilgrimage and he goes down to Maryland to visit his great aunt. And while he's there, he starts doing all of this research um, and genealogy work into his family. And that's kind of when I think he realized that he could teach this, teach these skills to other people, you know, how to go through records, how to research your family. And so by the time he came back up to Boston, he kind of had this business idea. And from there, he started doing, you know, the walking and driving tours. And it's been 16 years that he's been doing these tours. 16 years later, he's still still out here educating people on the hidden history of, of mm. Black Boston. So Ari, you were walking for two hours. Yeah. I want to know what the route was. Um, the route kind of starts at the Rose Kennedy Greenway at the monument for Zipporah Potta Atkins, the first free Black woman on the record to own property. And her property oh, wow. was right in the North End. And her monument is really, really easy to miss, unfortunately, which was something that mm. I noticed on the tour. Then he brings you over kind of like the highway and brings you down to the water where we then talk about the slave trade and Boston's connection to the slave trade. And then from there, you make your way over to Cops Hill Burying Ground, which is the last part of the tour. All right. So that's the route. Tell me about the things you learned along the way. I'm glad I learned a lot on this tour, but I'm ashamed that I didn't know more of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. especially as a black person growing up here. But I learned a lot, and um, he starts the tour with the story of three Black women here in Massachusetts, in Boston. And one of the women, she doesn't have a name in the record. He's call He calls her Queen Kit. And she was enslaved by the Maverick family back in the 1600s. And she's on the record as kind of refusing her master. He had demanded that she breed with another enslaved man, and she refused. It happened up here too, folks. Yes, it did happen up here too. And I think that's kind of a big point of the tour is that there's kind of this myth that exists that, you know, slavery was somehow less violent here in the North, when in reality it was violent just in um, different types of ways. 
So yeah, so Queen kicked, and here's Joel McCall talking a little bit about her. This woman, I call her Queen Kicked, K-I-C-K-T. She doesn't have a name in the record, but I said she was kicking and screaming, saying, I'm not going to be bred. Okay, and that happened right out on Noddles Island in the in the, the harbor there. And yeah, this man named John Jocelyn wrote it all down. He documents his voyages to Boston. And that's how we know her story. And unfortunately, that's all we know um, of mm. her story. You know, the rest of her story is kind of lost to time. Mm-hmm. What's another thing you learned on this tour? Okay, this one I feel like I should have known. But obviously, a uh, popular nickname for Boston is Beantown. And, Beantown. Yeah. And part of that comes from the popularity of Boston baked beans. And so I should have put two and two together, but um, Joel makes it more explicit in his tour about this connection here. There are a lot of different accounts of kind of where Boston baked beans, where the recipe originated from. But what we know is that it was probably created in the 19th century and like this attempt to make like a regional dish. The one thing that doesn't change is the inclusion of molasses. And molasses was a major export from the Sugar Islands where enslaved people had like an average lifespan of around seven years, which is crazy. Mm. So essentially, this molasses that was being used in the Boston baked beans recipe there is this involvement in the slave trade as well, which I just never really sat down and, and thought about all the different ways in which Boston's history is really tied to the slave trade. Yeah, it's like that, you know? They're just baked into our everyday lives. Exactly. Joel McCall points out that while Massachusetts, you know, the northern colonies were not slave-based societies. He calls them something that he's coined um, slavery-based society. Mm -hmm. Here's him talking a little bit more about that concept. This was a slavery-based society, meaning that the ships, the rum caskets, the food stores, the great wealth that was made from this entire system of uh, Boston became a big part of the Atlantic world. Um, because it was a slavery-based society. We're going to take a break, but we'll be right back. Politics has never been stranger or more online, which is why the politics team at Wired is making a new show, Wired Politics Lab. It's all about how to navigate the endless stream of news and information and what to look out for. Each week on the show, we'll dig into far-right platforms, AI chatbots, influencer campaigns, and so much more. Wired Politics Lab launches Thursday, April 11th. Follow the show wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back with more from Arielle Gray. I'm curious to know, where did you close out the tour? We closed it out at the Copps Hill Burying Ground, which is a historic graveyard located in kind of like the heart of the North End. And there is Prince Hall, a Black activist, pretty well-known Black activist is buried there. Mm -hmm. But what McCall does is he brings you to the section of the cemetery where they buried the Black people. And, um, you know, he mentioned that there are around a thousand Black folks, both free and enslaved, who are buried in this section of the cemetery. And you just kind of get this really eerie feeling because there are so few headstones. And there are several different explanations that folks have put forth as to why there are no headstones. Maybe they just didn't document folks. Maybe the headstones weathered away. But it just it just gives you this weird kind of like shiver down your spine when you see it because mm. it's so empty and it's so bare. And there's not really a story being told there. It's just this kind of like empty plot. And again, this was something that growing up, I never went down into the North End, so I had mm. no clue that there were this many Black folks buried uh, at Copps Hill Burying Ground. 
I want to come back to something because you bring up this idea of being ashamed of not knowing. You know, you grew up here in Boston. You went to school here. I mean, not that you should feel ashamed, but I guess, can you just talk about how Black history was taught to you growing up in this city? If I didn't have, like, adults in my life teaching me Black history, I wouldn't have known anything. And a lot of this stuff that I learned on the tour, I probably may have not ever really found out unless I was really doing the research to to do so. You know, growing up, you take trips to Plymouth Plantation. Now they call it something else. They call it Pawtucket. Plymouth Pawtucket. Mm -hmm. But growing up, it was called Plymouth Plantation. You learn about the pilgrims. You learn about Paul Revere. But you don't really learn about the history of marginalized people here unless it's in the context of history that's already happening. I'm somebody who really appreciates history and likes to like, root stories in history, right? you know? And when you think about the people who've been here before, the unmarked graves and stuff like that, I think it just adds so much weight to where we are. Yeah, it is is really important. And I think that's why, you know, Joel feels so passionate about doing these tours. It's really dope when people find their passion and it's something that is really enriching. Yeah, you know, he's out here pretty much by himself doing these tours, and I just think it's such a valuable resource. Absolutely. And to that point, Ari, I want to end our discussion with this cut from Joel. The main thing to take away is that our Black history, our inclusion, our belonging, our survival, and our humanity example is throughout the entire um, history, and it's right in front of our faces the whole time. Listen, Ari, you're the best. Thank you so, so much for coming through to The Common. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me again, Daryl. That's WBUR reporter Ariel Gray. And that's our show for today. Thank you so much for listening to The Common. If you want to get in touch with us, Hit us up on Instagram at WBUR The Common or send us an email at the common at WBUR.org. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and I will talk to you tomorrow.